I live a life of adventure. The best adventures are the most challenging, and those take me on some pretty diverse paths. So with those themes in mind, today we're going to build a go-anywhere bike, one that fits my adventure eclecticism. Let's get started. Today we're going to be building a Soma Wolverine. As I lay out the components for this build, I want to talk about the frame for a bit. The Wolverine is an amazingly versatile frame. I've seen frames built up for cyclocross and gravel racing, fully loaded bike packing and touring, 650B and 29er Wolverines, Wolverines with Jones bars, single speed Wolverines, and with that split seat stay, there are many belt driven Wolverines out there. Soma has truly created a mud. That's a compliment. I like how many build options there are with this frame. And I'm a tinkerer, so I'm fairly certain that the build you'll see here will not be the final one on this size 54 frame. The build versatility of the Wolverine is a plus, but the geometry of the Wolverine is the reason I chose this frame for a go anywhere bike. I'll cover a bit of geometry here, but I believe that a separate video would be better suited for an in-depth discussion. I'll link that video in the description below when it's available. Frame geometry as it relates to styles of riding is a bit complicated, but briefly, four areas of frame geometry make a bike ride a certain way. These are head tube angle, fork rake, trail, and bottom bracket drop. I'll simplify this now and say that the Wolverine's geometry is a great balance between the extremes of bike geometry. Its head tube angle, fork rake, trail, and bottom bracket drop make for a stable ride on dirt and gravel while still feeling snappy on pavement. Soma classifies the Wolverine as a monster cross bike. I first heard this term about five years ago during a build similar to this Wolverine. I'm still not entirely sure what monster cross means. The closest I can come up with is a bike that fills the gap between a cyclocross bike and a 29er mountain bike. It's a drop bar, wide tire bike that can do it all on pavement, gravel, and even single track. Is Wolverine up to the task? Well, we'll find out after this build. On every build, I like to start with the bottom bracket and crank set first. I'll get to that in a moment, but first I want to make sure this steel frame lasts a lifetime. I live in Wisconsin, where there are two seasons, summer and, well, road salt season. If I ride during winter and in the rain like I'm planning, I want to prevent the frame from rusting from the inside out. To prevent rust, I'm spraying this frame with Problem Solver's Frame Saver. This is my first time using Frame Saver, but I've used BioShield T9 and WD-40 as rust inhibitors in other builds. Honestly, I'm not too worried about rust and this may just be a preventative peace of mind. I just sprayed the Frame Saver in all the tubes, including the fork, and let it sit to coat overnight. Back to the bottom bracket. The Wolverine has a 68 millimeter shell with what are called English threads. I wanted quality, so I chose a 30 millimeter spindle BSA from White Industries. That's a lot of bottom bracket information. Just know that 30 millimeters is a wide diameter for a bottom bracket, and BSA means it's for a threaded shell like my Wolverine frame. I mainly chose this bottom bracket because I'm installing the White Industries R30 crank set. This aluminum crank set is lightweight and stiff that's not the best part. White Industries ingenious variable bolt circle system allows you to choose any outer chain ring 38 to 52 teeth and an inner chain ring between 24 and 38. I've chosen a 44-26 setup. This will give me the wide range I'm looking for in an adventure bike. But if I want something different or if I find myself in a riding environment that requires a different setup, I'll be able to swap out the chain rings quickly and easily. That's not something you'd find on most other brands' crank sets. This is the second bike I will build with the R30 crank set, and I'm excited to use it again. Let's move 
move over to the headset. I'm cheap, and I didn't want to pay nearly $200 for a headset cup press tool. To install my headset, I've built my own headset press. It's just a threaded rod, a few fender and rubber washers, and they're all compressed with some flange nuts. It cost me about $11 to make, and I've used it on four builds with a great deal of success. My lower cup is a Cane Creek 110. It's strong, lightweight, and runs smooth. For my top cup, I'm going with something unusual. The Visco set, also from Cane Creek, was designed to eliminate speed wobble on e-bikes. So why the heck am I using an e-bike headset on an adventure bike? The gravel and bike packing community claim that the dampening properties of the Visco set reduces vibrations and increases stability while riding gravel. I'll be honest, I'm not sold yet on the claimed benefits of the Visco set, but I'm installing it and I'll have a video dedicated to my thoughts on this unusual headset. Next up, I'm going to install the fork and handlebars. This steel unicron fork is a stiff and strong 15mm through axle designed by Soma. I want this to be a go anywhere bike, so switching from quick release to through axle made a lot of sense. This will be my first drop bar bike with a through axle and I'm excited to take it to places I wouldn't dare take a bike with quick release. I'm installing the Salsa Call Chipper handlebars. These bars are a happy balance between Salsa's extremely flared wood chipper and the moderately flared cowbell. This bike screams balance, so the cow chippers made a lot of sense. I hope the 24 degree flare and the 46 millimeter width will make riding on rough terrain a dream. The stem I'm putting on is temporary so that I can install the bars. The ridiculous length that you see in the steerer tube now is obviously temporary as well. I want to find the perfect riding position before I decide on a stem, position my brifters, and put the bar tape on. Speaking of the brifters, I like SRAM. The simplicity of the double tap system of this 2x10 setup is right where I want this bike to be. What's not simple are the hydraulic brakes. Or so you'd think. I've used hydraulic brakes on only one other road bike. They were a dream. Compared to a cable actuated system, hydros take less force to brake and the closed system keeps out dirt and grime. These are two great things for an adventure bike. The argument against using hydro brakes on an adventure bike is that if you are in the middle of nowhere, it's much easier to repair a cable system than hydros. And I don't know about that. If you maintain your hydro brakes properly, the likelihood of failure is slim. The beauty of brakes on a bike is that you have two. If one fails, you can get to safety using only one. And honestly, a Sasquatch sighting is more likely to happen than have both your hydros fail at the exact same time. front and rear derailleurs installed, and then onto the sexy part of the bike, the wheels. I'm going tubeless with a set of Stan's No Tube Crest Mark III rims. I fitted the front with a Shutter Precision's Dyna Hub so I can run a light and possibly a USB. The rear has a White Industries center lock disc hub. These rims and the hubs built around them weren't cheap, but they're strong and stiff and will last for years. The Stan Snow Tube Crest Mark III's will allow me to put on wider tires that the Wolverine frame has room for. I went a bit crazy and fitted a set of 50mm Paneracer Gravel Kings. With its stiff sidewall, these were by far the hardest to install tubeless. But with a little bit of patience and the help of my air compressor, I got them installed. I heard a lot of good things about gravel and pavement versatility of the Gravel Kings. I'm looking forward to using them.
Let's get this chain on, adjust the derailleurs, and index the gears. After a few short test rides, I'll cut the steerer tube and go out on an adventure. The first one is this weekend, and I'll be sure and get some footage and let you know what I think of the frame and all the components in future episodes. 